Hello, this is your Friday Info Hub. Natural Resources Minister says Ghana's decision on oil and gas were informed by Venezuelan developments. Education Minister Nicolette Henry clears the billion dollar Cato Secondary School for September opening. Environment Department head says Rio Convention's critical to Ghana's green development. Minister David Patterson clears the air on relatives' arrest in Grenada. And government condemns PPP aligned citizens' report for another false report. And finally this week, Linden's South Amelia's Ward residents launch a community drain cleaning project. More after the break. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class, or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana. Welcome back. Natural Resources Minister Raphael Trotman told the Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Natural Resources that decisions relating to the oil and gas industry were informed by happenings in Venezuela. Tifti Rogers has the details. Minister Trotman says the demarcation of the Stabrook block from the Barima Waini to the Quarantine was a strategic decision. We needed a partner in 1999 to cover the entire sea space from tip to tip and that company happened to be an American company. The threat to the country's territorial integrity by Venezuela was the primary reason the government moved to anchor ExxonMobil in its waters, Minister Trotman noted. We wanted to be working with a company that had international gravitas and strength and the wherewithal financially and politically to represent us in the international arena. Venezuela claimed the Anna sea space following the announcement of the first oil discovery back in 2015. The western neighbor later backed down following diplomatic pressure. Minister Trotman described the update of the Exxon Agreement as a strategic move against Venezuela's continued claims on Guyana's territorial space. Guyana's defense of its territorial integrity against Venezuela is now before the International Court of Justice. Guyana is set to begin oil production by 2020. Minister Trotman says this too is also a strategic push to protect Guyana's oil resource. We needed to assert our sovereignty over our resources given the 2015 decree uh, by Venezuela and the utterings that were coming from Venezuela. Hence the reason why we are going to production in what is considered um, relatively record times. The Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Natural Resources was also briefed on developments in the forestry sector and the ministry's measures to treat GGMC workers exposed to mercury. Reporting for InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. The wait is over for students of Cato in Region 8. Come September, the Cato Secondary School will be open. This was confirmed after a high-level team recently toured the school complex. The team comprised of Minister of Education, Nicolette Henry, and Minister of Social Cohesion, Dr. George Norton. The Cato Secondary School was completed three years ago, but was never commissioned since investigations revealed a number of structural defects which needed to be remedied before students and teachers could occupy the building. Both ministers expressed satisfaction, indicating that it is the government's mandate to ensure that every child has access to an education. Education. Whilst there are some minor works to be completed, Minister Henry said that the school should be second to none. The Cato Secondary is this country's first billion-dollar school and will cater for more than 900 students, inclusive of dormitory facilities. 
As Ghana embarks on the Green Path of Development, head of the Department of Environment, NDB Shores, explained how three Rio conventions are critical to this process in this Stacey Carmichael report. The Department of Environment embarked on an initiative with stakeholders to examine how the three Rio conventions can be mainstreamed into our national development processes. The three conventions are the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Head of the department, NDB Schwerz, explains. One of the important elements of the project that we are doing is uh, what we refer to as a learning by doing process. It involves all stakeholders, and it's not only stakeholders from government, but private sector as well, um, coming together to say how the three conventions can be mainstreamed into our national development processes. Schwerz believes that in the past, limited capacity hampered the country's uptake of these conventions. The project aims to build Guyanese's capacity for future development. It not only applies to the Rio Convention, that capacity that is built will also enable us to um, be able to be more responsive to other environmental conventions that the government has signed on to. The Department and the United Nations Development Program Global Environmental Facility are implementing the project titled Strengthening Technical Capacities to Mainstream and Monitor Rio Convention Implementation Through Policy Coordination. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson has cleared the air with regard to the arrest of his brother in Grenada. In a post on Facebook, Minister Patterson said that their family was shocked to learn of the developments, but that his brother is an adult and they expect the laws of Grenada to give him a fair trial and if found guilty of any wrongdoing, he will have to face the consequences. Minister Patterson said that the family will provide support as permitted by law. Patterson, who is highly regarded and a well-liked minister, assured the Guyanese public that unlike what transpired under the previous administration, he will not use his public office to seek to influence the course of justice. Meanwhile, the coalition government condemned a false report on the PPP-aligned website Citizens Report that Minister Patterson facilitated his brother's exit through the Chedi Jagan airport. In a strongly worded statement, the government flatly rejected the falsehood, calling it a wicked and malicious lie. See our website www.dpi.gov.gy and our Facebook page for the full statement. Renata LaFleur now tells us that Princess Street residents are finally getting a long overdue rehabilitated roadway. Emergency works which began today are critical since the road was structurally unsafe, according to foreman Marlon McCree. Actually, we scarifying, looking for any mud, if any mud coming up anywhere or just because of the drain, don't have no proper shoulder, make it slippery. So we scarifying, I did about four inches across the run, paving about two inches as far come compacted to inch as well. And we're hoping to finish it all goes well by Sunday because of the emergency. We don't want to inconvenience people for too long. Approximately 153 meters of the road was slipped and will be corrected. Other sections will be patched. Residents lauded the much needed repairs. Commendation to the contractors as well as those in the Ministry of Public Works for opting to fix Princess Street because Princess Street is a main street. This is good for me business because when you're cooking, people want to be able to park and drive on a safe road and brap, there's a safe road. Okay, I feel very nice about it. They're actually doing something about the road. They need to like focus more on the buses that is coming from that side, yes. And everything will be fine. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure has been constructing and rehabilitating roads in regions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 10. The sums of $1.2 billion and $800 million were allocated for miscellaneous and urban roads, respectively. From Princess Street Lodge, Renetta LaFleur for InfoHub. Boxtonians and residents in surrounding communities were urged to get on board the Rural Agricultural Infrastructure Development Project. Chairman of the Buxton Fowls NDC, Forbes Abrams, urged residents to support the Rural Agriculture Infrastructure Development Project. I therefore want to take the opportunity to urge our young men and women to get on board and to become involved in the current drive to restore agriculture to the prominence it once held in the village. 180 acres of land are scheduled to be cleared in the backlands as a start towards this agricultural drive. Get on board, my people. Get on board. 
The REID project involves the development of fair weather farm-to-market roads, clearing of overgrowth, and the provision of technical assistance, amongst other things. Abrams said it is a great opportunity to revitalize the village's economy. I'm absolutely optimistic that time will come when we will have grown to the extent that we will need to establish cold storage facilities and warehouses for our abundant production. Uh, this will happen only if we, the beneficiaries, are motivated by these developments to be more integrally involved in our own personal domestic economy and by extension the development of the village economy and the development of the country's economy. The second term chairman made these calls at the commissioning ceremony for a new drainage pump station at Friendship Vigilance on the east coast of Demerara. Through the RAID project, four communities, Ithaca, Mocha, Triumph and Buxton, are receiving government's assistance to boost agriculture production. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. Zinil Williams was in the mining town of Linden recently and reports that residents of South Amelia's ward launched a community drain cleaning project. We've been struggling for years in this community concerning the road and the drainage. We are going to work together to make sure that things keep progressing in this community and far the field in Linden. Dawson explained that the community of South Amelia's ward has been neglected for some years now. Therefore, the Regional Democratic Council has taken up to financing 15 residents with the sum of $300,000 to clear the drains. Chairman of the RDC, Renis Morian, said that moves will be made to have a community development council established so that the community will be empowered through an organized body. You'd want to have a community development council established here. That anything happening here, it could be in your hands. Any contracts, any job, anything. Minister within the Ministry of Natural Resources, Mona Brooms, who conducted a first-hand assessment of the Well Road in South Amelia's ward, urged the residents to take charge and own their communities. Nobody cares about your community like you. You live here, so you know exactly where the water pass, when it pass, where is the speed. Zanil Williams for Info Hub. And finally, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure is advising the general public that the pedestrian overpasses located at Providence and Diamond will be temporarily closed to prepare for the installation of the elevators. The closing dates are as follows. The Ministry apologizes for the inconvenience. If you happen to be nearby while the installations are being done, please be cautious. Have a lovely weekend. The forecast is for rain, so do take along an umbrella when you go out to do your Saturday shopping. And remember, you can catch a roundup of all the major stories and InfoHub recap. And don't miss InfoHub In-Depth, where we take a comprehensive look at the big issues. Goodbye now. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging, as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas. It is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana.